Okay, great. So I think that allowed everyone to sort of get in and get a little bit settled. Um, I don't know if any of you have seen um, our pro any of the other project films. There's On our website, there's lots of other project films. I won't show them all um, tonight. Lizzie, just... Lizzie, there was no sound on that. Ah. Visuals and no sound. Okie doke. So what I'll do is in a moment, I am going to show you some bits and bobs on the website. So I'll just show you where they are on the website. So you've got an opportunity to have a little look at those maybe at your, um, at your leisure. I don't know what was happening there. I, I shared all the bits that it sort of told me to, but I've also got some sounds I was going to share with you. So that sounds, sounds as though you're not going to be able to hear those R's either. So I will just send those to you later so you can listen to them at home. Okay. So um, a little bit of a breakdown of tonight. What we're going to do is I'm going to do a quick intro about the project um, and then we're going to do a quick go round so you can just say hello, let everyone know your name and where you're located. It's quite handy because it potentially it's really great here because we've got North Devon back here. So we know that you're in North Devon. Brilliant. Nice to see you. How are you? So it's just handy. And I know Vicky here with the bat hanging behind her is actually in America. But it might be how you might have somebody close to you that you could potentially hook up with. And then please do use the chat option to maybe chat to each other, send each other messages or anything. Oh, sorry, somebody did send me a message. I was trying to let people in earlier. So I wasn't uh, paying attention to the um, chat. My apologies. Um, so if we so my name's Lizzie. Um, and I work on the community engagement side of the project, and that's what that film was really talking about. So you, you can see, you could see that they were visiting schools and community groups and things like that. And that's the kind of community engagement side of things. They also um, that's kind of going into um, like operating the website, doing social media, those kinds of things also working with community groups and setting up community groups. And we've got the lovely Tessa Frost here, I can see from Chudley Wild. Excellent, hello there. Um, so it's great. And I think we all saw you in the film there as well. Yeah. Chudley mm -hmm. Wild is a super, um, one of our bat friendly uh, communities. We've also got two other big threads to the project. One is um, like knowledge or rather science that's looking at gaining more knowledge about that, working with the community and also working with um, students. And then there's another thread, which is landowners. Um, well, we have people on the project called farm advisors, but really it's not just farmers that they're working with. It's also people that have got small holdings, large landowners. So they're going out and they're, they're supporting um, those, those different threads. It is definitely worth looking at um, those films if you get a chance and that will break down a little bit more about those threads within the project. Um, so tonight what we're going to do is just going to have a little recap so you all know what you're, you're in for, you're signed up for so to speak. Um, we're going to have a little look um, at, uh, uh, so we're going to go through a uh, at presentation so like a powerpoint kind of presentation we're going to go through that and look at some facts i'm also going to show you lots of handouts and information that's available to you if you want to use it we do, do we've been doing another yeah, session which looks parents. at like really kind of child friendly um ways of engaging you know children child friendly yeah, activities uh, uh, and i will show you the um oh, yeah, that i'm gonna um I will show you that information, but we won't go into it with as 
same amount of detail. Um, I'll show you any handouts, those sorts of things. We'll also look at, um, talk a little bit about who, like logistics of running talks, you know, who that might be, where you might go, those kinds of things. And then I've set, I've just got together a kind of presenting tips, sort of, sort of then tips for like doing talks and things, which I'm sure tonight I will um, do the complete opposite, no doubt. So yeah, do by all means take notes and that's, that ends up being what happens, isn't it? So not what to do is the example you're gonna to get tonight, maybe. Um, I was initially in other talk sessions, we have had an opportunity to go off into breakout sessions. So people could have a little go if they wanted to. However, arranging, since arranging the sort of talk training, I have set up two additional sessions where people can come in and have a little practice at doing those, which I think is going to work better than actually having a go at doing it tonight. You know, it seems a bit much low. We were just, you were going off into Zoom rooms before and just chatting a bit about yourselves, just having a go but there'll be that opportunity to do that later, specifically looking at the back knowledge that you've gained this evening. So just to let you know, those sessions are next Tuesday between nine o'clock and 10.30 in the morning and Tuesday the 27th between six o'clock and half past seven at night. And um, the, all of those sessions are bookable via the website. Those sessions are up on there. And I think that, worked better than us having a go at doing that tonight. That will probably mean that we'll be together a bit less than kind of half past seven. We'll probably finish a little bit earlier. Than okay, so um, was there anything I had to explain before we started? No, we talked about the techie stuff. I've had a chat about me. Any questions before we start? I just thought I'd look around. Everyone seems all right, great. Um, okay, so. Can we just go, right, just a really quick go round. Um, Tess, would you like to introduce yourself first? Hello. I always have to get my thingy in the right place to unmute. Lovely. Yeah, um, I've lived in Chudley, which is southwest of Exeter for 40 years-ish. Uh, only recently been able to have the chance of being able to do anything uh, wildlifey and batty. So I'm a complete newbie to all this. Uh, but over the last four years, we've had a great deal of fun. I've learned lots. Um, I'm not sure that uh, giving formal talks and communication skills is, is, my, um, is my forte, uh, but we will give it a go. I don't like, I, I hate seeing myself. I, was, I hated seeing myself on that, that uh, video thing. It's horrible. Uh. Anyway, Chud Chudley has its own bat um, colony of about 100 um, Greater Horseshoes, uh, who um, have their babies here, uh, and some roost through the winter as well in the caves underneath Chudley Rock, which is a great place should you ever wish to visit Chudley. It's very beautiful. That's great. Thanks. And I think you do yourself a disservice, Tess. You've been fantastic for Chudley Wild. You've done so much work and a lot. that friendly garden and so really top amazing that community there. Thank you so much. Um, should we go to Angela next? You ready, Angela? Is that all right? I should warn you, shouldn't I, before just jumping in? <laughs> Thanks, Lizzie. Yeah, hi, everyone. I'm Angela. I'm originally from Dorset, and I'm now living in South Oxfordshire. And uh, I have to admit, I don't like seeing myself on the screen either. Tess. Yeah. My team's really difficult to present in. Um, but I am going into a school next Friday. Our local school has a, a number of classes, and they all name themselves after animals. And this class has called themselves Bat Class. So I'm going into bat class next Friday to talk about bats, which should be fun. So um, Great. And Angela is also author of Bobby, <laughs> Bobby the brown long-eared bat. Oh, look at that. The kids came piling in then when the book appeared. So I just, just, just wanted to do a little push there. Thank you. That's brilliant. Thanks, Angela. Thank you. And we've got Sam Pickering here from North Devon with, with a whole... A whole load of pups there in the room. <laughs> Two trainees. Lovely, brilliant. <laughs> so it's the middle of dinner time and bath time, so it's multitasking <laughs> as ever. It's, you're amazing. 
I don't know about that. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll let you go. You look a bit busy. So shall I introduce you? So Sam, Sam Pickering is a back care and she works up in North Devon. You're close to Braunton, aren't you? I am, yeah. Um, I'm only about half an hour, 20 minutes from Braunton Roost. And I actually have a greater horseshoe in care that's come from the roost as well. Uh... Um, so it's quite exciting, though they're very strange characters up close. <laughs> OK, yeah. Oh, well, we wish Betty the horseshoe well. She recovers. Yeah, hopefully she'll go back out. It's just getting her to behave like a proper bat. So I think she's had a bit of a head injury. So oh, no. Okay. Give her time. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Sam. Thank you. And Bailey, how are you there? Hello, I'm so I'm Jo. Um, ignore the LA, that's not me. Um, okay. <laughs> a bit like you. Um, so I'm... But in my day job, I work at a, a land-based recovery project and we do all the back surveys. It's a really good tool for recovery. It's getting people really connected with nature. So I kind of wanted to take that next step really and just go, what else can we do for the guys that I work with? And we've done all, we've had Anna up. She's come and checked out all our hedgerows. And Great. so, yeah, it's, it's, we're quite new to it all, but really quite excited. Great. That's brilliant. So we're going to go through some after the talk that we'll go through we'll also look at other resources which i'm sure will be really helpful as well so ace, ace, thank you brilliant. and vicky vicky that is vicky they i think vicky's tuned in all the way from america is that correct i got that right or vicky has tuned out or is that me that's tuned out so we'll go down to joe ellen that, that is correct i'm from the oh, south you are lovely oh you oh me yeah, go for it. Go for it, Vicky. Hey, <laughs> hi, I'm uh, Vicky, and I'm from the southeastern part of the United States, uh, Auburn, Alabama, exactly. But um, I am an educator, and I pretty much do what Lizzie's going to be training y'all to do today in Devon, and I just kind of wanted to hang out and, and see how you do it. I was fortunate enough to visit England a few years ago and got to see some of your greater horseshoe bats and the roost for a lesser Right. And just figure any time we can share it. Uh, so who knows, I may steal some of your stuff and use it on Saturday. Okay. Steal away, steal away, please do. Um, that's lovely. Thank you, Vicky. Um, and Joe Ellen. Hopefully, I can share some stuff with you sometime. Great. I'm up for that. I'm up for that. Hey, Joe Ellen. Welcome. Hey. Hi. Yeah. Hi. I'm in California. Um, I see Jesse is in California too. I'm in Sacramento. Um, and I do some uh, bat caring. We call it rehabbing here and some education. We have huge colonies of Mexican free tail bats here Amazing. in our area up to the hundreds of thousands. So <laughs> uh, we get a lot of those in. I have four right now. So um, just glad to see what you're up to over there. Ah, great. Thank you so much. Welcome. It, it, in the UK, generally rehab is where you go to, to deal with sort of addiction problems. So <laughs> like that, that rehab would be like, oh, I've had to I eat too many moths or something. It's like, you know. um, so we've got Jesse um, in the corner, although your screen's dark. So I wonder if you're, what we might do is we've heard that Jesse, I think Joella was saying Jesse's from the States as well. So amazing. I don't think. Tess and Joe are going to be hooking up to do a bat walk. Joe Ellen, you're probably a bit too far apart, I think, to sort of work collaboratively, but it's nice to know where everyone is. Um, okay, so I'm going to go straight into the sort of bat knowledge section. And I'm going to share um, our, oh, I've had quite a lot of, there's a few questions. Oh, there's a few people trying to get in. I'm going to, wait a minute, hopefully these guys are all. So sorry about the tech is just a bit glitchy tonight, isn't it? Right. Okay. So sorry, some people are just going in and out. I think the internet is playing us around a little bit tonight. Okay. So I'm going to go straight into that screen share. 
Um, where is it? Let's have a little look. That's the one I want. So you should see a PowerPoint presentation with a back line across the picture. Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm not going to put it into full screen mode um, because I would like to be able to show you the notes that are written in the sections here. Um, I don't, as you can see, if, I, if you've used PowerPoint before, you can scroll that up and down so you can have loads of notes. Some of these pictures have got a few more notes. Um, also, what you're able to do is this, um, as you'll see down the bottom here, this presentation has got 48 slides. If you pop somewhere for like maybe a 20 minute talk, probably not going to get 48, you're not going to go through 48 slides. And what you can do is, so if I click on slide number two here that said fruit bats on it, if I right click, you can hide the slide. So that just kind of hides that one a little bit. So I would, that would just go from one and it would just jump over into number three. Or I can, if you have to click back on hide slide again to unhide it. So just to, um, make a little note of that. You'll find as we go through the presentation, if I go back to slide one, you'll notice on here that there are some copyright issues on some of the pictures. We're allowed, we have permission from the people that have taken the photographs, share the images specifically relating to the Devon Great Orchard Map Project. So if you're showing those images, that does need to be um, you with regards to you're promoting the project at the same time. Um, so you, basically that means don't take the images out and kind of use them anywhere else. So I just want to let you know that. But absolutely by all means, you could get rid of most of the slides if you wanted to and just have a couple of slides in there. So you don't need to, um, there was a little chat coming up. Somebody's responded, that's brilliant, thank you. Um, okay, so we're gonna get started. Um, so a little bit here, and you can just see at the bottom here, it's just notes for yourself. Introduce yourself. The talk will cover some great horseshoe bat information, the project, and how people can get involved. So this is a kind of really general talk that we've got here. Let's look at a few other bat species as well. Um, and also about the project. So you might, you know, you could always put other slides in if you want to talk about other things, something more specific to an area that you're going to. Um, but just to let you know. And it's really good idea when you sort of talk about yourself. I mean, don't worry, um, you don't need to be a bat expert. Just going along, being enthusiastic, opening, you know, opening up, getting people thinking and, you know, getting people engaged and excited about wildlife. You don't have to be the expert at it. I'm absolutely not a bat expert. I'm, I'm my background is education. So I'm not a PhD in, um, so we've got that there, a bit of info. So we're gonna flick straight down through to number two. And this is just looking at the largest bat in the world, the flying fox, um, which is a type of fruit bat. And it's got that sort of little orangey kind of collar there. And there's, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna go like through everything on all of the slides. You'll have an opportunity to look at that kind of at a later date. We'll sort of flip through them a bit quickly, but you'll see all of the notes down the bottom here. So this is, you'll see that the wingspan sizes, things like that. And if I flick onto the next one, you've got this, mm -hmm. um, also this one's also known as the bumblebee bat because it's the size of a little bumblebee. So, you know, the smallest bat in the world and the largest, one of the largest in the world. Um, next one looks at uh, why bats matter. Um, and I didn't know until I worked on a project that they're actually really good pollinators. Um, some species are the only species that pollinate certain plants. Um, specifically, well, you've got some here like um, cocoa, cocoa, mango, banana. The, the, I think it's the tequila plant only pollinated by a specific bat. So if it wasn't for them, there'd be no tequila, which <laughs> would that be a shame? I don't know. There'd be a lot less headaches out there, wouldn't there, if that was the case. Um, so we've got a couple, some examples of UK bats here. What's also really good um, is I've got these great, um, I'm going to stop sharing that screen a moment. 
So just to show you, they, the Field Studies Council do these great out guides. You can get them from their website, that's the Field Studies Council, and they've got a list of all the different UK bats, which is quite nice to have handouts sometimes. And also, I, I will sometimes take with me um, is potentially to hand out whilst I'm there. Or it might be that, say, Angela's going off into a school, she might not, we're called, talking about this being about talks, you may not want to have a big PowerPoint presentation with loads of pictures. You might just have four pictures just to show the kind of key things and then talk about different things whilst you're there. So that's just a little idea. I'm going to reshare that screen. Is there a link to the handouts? Natalie, good question. Absolutely, there is. And I'm going to show you in a minute. So brilliant, good question, thank you. Let's have a little look after finding all the time. Brilliant, so we've got here, looking at some different bat species. And then as we flick down and through, this talks a little bit more about the kind of decline in the population. Um, you know, where the sort of ranges are. So you look at those, if we flip down, you know, why, this looks at why there have been no decline. So this is, um, you know, looking at, these are the places that great orchards would live, like caves, old buildings, you know, most old barns or buildings in the UK, you know, they get regenerated, don't they? They're turned into lovely new homes, understandably, because they're really beautiful, but unfortunate for the back. And also, where do greater horseshoes hunt? You know, where are they getting out and getting their food? Woodlands, hedges, meadows. You know, we're finding a loss and a decline in those, in those things. Here's a good picture. And this is how bats get around the landscape. They find it very hard. They find it very hard to cross the landscape if there were no hedges because they use the hedges in order to locate. And then this, this is an excellent hedge for greater because it's got trees in it so it can sort of bridge along the, the edge when it's caught its prey it can then um, hang in order to eat its eat its food so this is interesting maybe for Tess I'm sure you've seen this before but this shows you the yellow is the air, built up area in 1947 and this is just 2010 and this is just chuggly so you can see how much the kind of building area is spreading out into <clears throat> into the habitat. You're also looking at the purple is kind of the loss of wildflower meadows. So although these, this section here looks like it's a bit bigger, there's less sections, much less sections down here. And those are the classic kind of feeding places for those. So it helps people understand, you know, the impact that things have on wildlife. Um, so a little bit more about the bat. So we've got the great orchard bat. Why is it called so? And it's called so because of this great nose, orchard set shaped nose leaf. They use their nose, they make the sound kind of through their nose a bit like they're snorting. It's not a, a snort sound like a pig, but it's like they're sort of a clicking sound, but it comes out through their nose. Um, and they aren't blind, lots of people think that they're blind, but they can see, it's just when you're flying at night, you don't really wanna use that as your main source of being able to get around. So that's why that's better locate. You looked really hard, just in these little sections here, you'll see their little eyes and they've got lovely big ears so that they can hear that. Oh, I've got a little, it's in the chat, just checking the chat, somebody's, oh no, it's disappeared. That's fine. Okay. Um, yep. So that's why it's called the Greater Horseshoe. And if we pop down here, uh, Greater Horseshoe bats, we've got a wingspan of up to 40 centimetres. So they're one of the largest UK, UK bats. Weight 14 to 34 grams. Can live up to 30 years, which is amazing when you think of their um, how light they are. And I'm just going to stop that screen share a moment and just show you what I do, I have a box, I have this great bag, a bat bag, which I have loads of, loads of stuff in it. And um, so some of the things that I take around as well is, so for instance, if I was talking about the weight um, of a bat, I've got a little bag of sugar and I sort of hand that around. 
So you could, if you were having a talk, you could hand some different things around and then throughout the talk, say, has anybody got a bag of sugar? And they could hold it and say, what do you think that's representing? Or if it's a class of children, I hand the things around and I, I get them all to feel the weight in their hand. So they can really understand the concept of how light that is. Because, you know, you say to a child, 30, they weigh about 30 grams, they they go, I don't know. to be honest, I say a child, you could say that to an adult, they might not know. It's not necessarily um, an indicator. So, and I've also got little bits of balloon that I hand out. I, grown-ups you'd probably be all right with, but with groups of children, I tend not to hand full balloons out because I'm an adult. You hand me a balloon, I want to blow it up. And the last thing you want is lots of, you know, kids, especially at the minute, you know, loads of kids blowing up balloons and things. So I hand out a bit so they can stretch it and kind of feel the, and I say, you know, what's that supposed to represent? It's supposed to represent their, how their wings kind of stretch on their frame. And I've got a little, and um, always when I work in a school, the teaching assistant always goes, that's a knit comb, which it absolutely is, but it, it's never been used. I, pr I always promise it's never been used. And that's supposed to feel like their little claws. So they understand that they're not, they're not really sharp. This is quite, a, it's quite delicate really. And I've got, um, I, I've got a bit of sheepskin that I hand out. And um, that's supposed to represent that the, you know, their bodies are furry. So a lot of children that I speak to think that they're scaly, a bit more like f um, snakes or fish, but they're not, they're, they're um, furry in their tummies. So it's just, and I've got this as well. I've got a little pot of um, apu, which, you know, kids, well, and grown ups, they love to see a bit of bapu. So it's just worth having a little kind of, I call it my touchy feely box. So that's kind of to hand out and sort of show. Can I just say that if you use cocoa pot as an alternative to bapu? I love or that. Or Rice Krispies. Uh, I love just that. For health and safety, that's easier with kids. Yeah, brilliant idea. Brilliant idea. I really like that a lot. So yeah, top tip there. Um, cocoa Pops. I, I, maybe I'll tell them. No, I won't say that they are Cocoa Pops. That could backfire on me, couldn't it? Okay, I'm going to reshare that screen again. There you go. It's just nice to go a bit in and out of always looking at that same screen. So there you go. What, what's your sort of info about your bats really there? And you've got like foraging areas. I mean, that's a pretty wide perimeter that they're flying in at night. Um, uh, they can live the longest, one of the largest UK bats. So you've got all of that sort of info in there. And I'm going to keep popping through. And here we've got a great image. I love this image of the bat swooping to grab that prey in, in his wing they will then have to go and perch feed. So they, they, don't, um, they don't eat on the run kind of thing or eat on the wing, I suppose you should say, instead of they're flying. Um, and I, when I say sort of to children, you know, if you're, in the, if you're running around eating a sandwich at lunchtime, the teacher will say to you, won't you, can you go and sit down and eat your lunch? And it's the same for bats, they have to fly and they will perch. And they, greater horseshoes and lesser horseshoe bats um, will either be flying or hanging. You're not going to see them on the floor or, crawl, you know, you're not going to see them in any other way other than flying or perched. Saying that, um, wildlife don't, don't, they don't read the wildlife instruction manuals. So actually at some point, I'm sure you will see a greater horseshoe or a lesser horseshoe, but the normal behavior is not to do that. Potentially if they're on the ground, they're injured. Um, so they need somebody like um, Jo Ellen or Sam to come in and rescue them. Um, or they might just have decided, you know, that sometimes they don't listen. So um, they might just be doing something that's opposite to what we think that they do. But just to bear those things in mind. So they will perch feed and they'll use the jaws and they've got like a little hook thumb and they will use that to kind of get into their prey. They'll kind of get, discard the, the crispy bits and eat all the juicy flesh on the inside. Then as we sort of scoot through, we've got some examples of the food that they will eat at different times of the year. With, they haven't got examples of who hunts them. Um, and I think this chap here is one of their greatest predators, really, the, the cat. 
the common house cat, maybe not house cat because they don't go out, but the sort of common cat is one of their greatest predators. It's having a little slurp there. Um, this, this slide here is just showing about us, showing you about all the different people who have supported the project. Um, and as we scroll down, we're gonna look at the project areas. So our priority areas have been these red spots on the Devon map. Um, as you can see, there's a big space in the center. Those of you who know Devon will know that this is Dartmoor, but people who don't know it that well, this is a kind of moorland area. So we're talking about very wide, windy, open areas, not really great for greater hortudes kind of moving across. And so that's why you're getting them in more sort of in condensed areas. A lot down here in the South Hands, interestingly along the A38, seems to be quite a lot here. Up here in Braunton, so this is where Sam, Sam North Devon back here, down here in the Tamar Valley, so it's just over into Cornwall, just on the, the border, and then over here into East Devon. And we've got some pictures here. You've got Berry Head here, which is this section down here. Berry Head's very interesting. As you can see, this is a, uh, uh, is it a precipice? What's it called? The, the, I want to call it a pinnacle of, a, of, of the land. So they've got, those bats that are living there have got a very small chunk of land kind of to fly back in into. They have to fly right back in to do their foraging as opposed to being able to fly all around that land. So you've got some different, this is um, Beer Quarry Caves. Here's Dartmoor, uh, Dartmoor yep. Yeah, the, that's the um, Royal Naval College, I believe. Um, okay, so flipping into that next bit, we talked earlier about those three different um, sort of strands of the project, communities, habitats, knowledge. Um, and the, the next few slides just talk really about what we've done really in the project, so events, um, walks. So this is all different things that have happened within the community aspect of things. If I slide down there. So there's lots of different pictures. There's lots of different info in there. The ones that, the, if you can see here, so slide number 25 here, it's got a little star on it. It's because there'll be some sort of, the poo here will sort of slide in as, as it's going along. So this is, you won't just have this slide that appears with the big poo in the middle of it, a big mm -hmm. bit of dung and then the dung beetle. Those will, so any slides that you see on here have got some animation within them. But because we're not looking at it as a slideshow, so we can see the notes, um, that's not happening at the minute, just to point that out for you. Um, are we just helping bats? No, which is great. We're helping lots of other, any work that we can do to support Bats is supporting a greater wildlife as well. And then if we scroll down, so we've got knowledge here. We're looking at the Devon Bat Survey. I don't know if anybody has been involved in that. It's a project where you can hire a bat detector for three nights, put it out in a grid square from the Devon map. Um, so you sort of select your area and then you go to one of these blue spots here, borrow the bat detector, take it back to where you're going to put it out and then um, at the end of that time, you send in an SD card, you get a report about the, um, any flights that you had, any passing flights that you had um, at the, over those three nights. And the next slide shows the different sort of coverage. This is from 19, uh, 2018. And this shows you um, all of the different grid squares that were covered all across Devon. Um, and here you've got um, greater horseshoe activity. So again, you can see where we've had those priority areas on that map before, you can see that those really are um, still those priority areas. Interesting that they're still getting picked up, even here, very lightly here in that sort of moorland area as well. And then if we go along here, this is also looking at um, Bavisto, um bats. So we're not just looking at the one bat species, you'll get to find out about any bat species that are lost. Um, here we've got a case study from beer. So looking at bat friendly beer, they've kind of worked together to, um, they had a little competition and they came up with this, um, which I think is great, this little logo. And they're working with um, the local school, the, um, 
the sort of parish council, they're working with local businesses to, to do lots of different back friendly activities from planting um, walks and just kind of raising awareness because of the, um, the bat population that they've got in deer quarry caves. And then we've got, they're doing a bit of planting. You see, they've also got a place where they have something called the Bat Beacon, which has got lots of kind of, it's like an information hub. Go to and find out more info about the bats. Case study here again of Chudley. There's a lovely test. We won't stay with you for too long, Tess, because we know you don't look, like looking at yourself. Uh, but um, that's a great one. You've got this lovely bench that they had, which I think is a really nice idea because it means people can sit down kind of out of the way of the bats and really enjoy the bats kind of sweeping around in their bat friendly garden. That's a great idea. And um, they're receiving their award there, fantastic. And then we've got Ovi Bat Group who have been doing lots of walks and then they run little stands, get out in the community and talking to different people, which is fantastic. Braunton up in North Devon where Sam is, they've got a, they've created this um, sort of viewing platform and you walk up to the viewing platform, which is near um, a, a, a sort of an information centre called Braunton Country loads of info about um, local wildlife um, and also they've created a, a trail like an audio pen trail to listen and find out about things as well and they've got also some information and a touch screen in there as well so the next bit looks a little bit about into gardens so that's how people can kind of get involved starting to talk about how uh, what people can do to help out, what plants are good, what plants aren't as good. Um, the classic debate, grass, you know, do you mow or don't you mow? I really like this idea here. You've got a big patch of wild um, flowers and then sort of nice sort of lawn either end. You also don't have to have a big lawn. You can have pots and things like that. But, um, and I'll show you later. I've got some resources that can help with that from gardening as well. So bug hotels. And, you know, you don't even have to have big fancy bug hotels or, or you've got like <laughs> bug benches here. You can just have a big pile of sticks. You know, it doesn't need to look really fancy for it to help wildlife. You know, um, bugs aren't going to go, oh, that is just not, a, that's not a proper bug hotel. I'm not going to hang out in there. They're not really bothered. As long as it's a big pile of mulch or sticks, I think they'll go for it. Lovely. I mean, and this is great. I love this really elaborate pond. Oh my goodness, this looks fantastic. And then, hey, look, or you can have a bucket in the ground. It doesn't need to be really massive. This really helps wildlife. Having water um, in the garden really, really helps. And then you've got little small gardens, pots. Somebody's done up an old pallet here, a little bit of planting hanging from the walls. And then all of the, also there are lots of other wildlife features that you have in the garden to help out. You've got here the classic bat bots. Um, greater horseshoes don't really benefit from bat boxes, but lots of other species do because they'll fly, land on this bit and then crawl up into um, the bat box. It's a bit about that size of the greater horseshoe and the fact that they don't, they're either flying or hanging, so they need to be able to fly into the space that they're going to be hanging through. So if we keep going, there you go. We've got a little bat friendly gardening here, and I'll show you a link to this leaflet in a moment. So that talks about kind of night floral, kind of night aromatic plants. Bat Conservation Trust, fantastic, great place to get lots of different resources. Um, bat friendly plants, and then sort of some more places to get resources here. For people it's just really great I mean I I've realized um just because you know something it doesn't mean that other people do so I mean I know you know just because I know about the field studies council doesn't mean to say other people do so it's great to show them the guides and some people do and, and we'll talk a little bit about that in our sort of top our tips or um and as well so it's just great, you know, really get, give people as much information. Action for Insects, this is a great new project happening across all of the wildlife trusts across the UK. Really great project. So that's worth having a little look into. And then we just ended on, you know, we've got a link to our website there. So that presentation really has got loads of, inf loads of information in it. 
but it's by no means um, everything that we've got. So I don't want that to put you off, actually. That was a bit like I've overwhelmed you with some information and I'll tell you there's even more. Yeah, so my apologies there, but it's it. But you don't need to use it all. What I'm trying to do here is kind of sort of give you lots <laughs> of things and then you can go away and say, well, I don't want that. I do want that. I am going to use this, but that's no good for kind of what I need. Having a little drink there, sorry about that. Um, let's have a little look. Are there any back t-shirts left we can buy? Ooh, I'll, I'll find out about that. I'm not too sure, but I will find out about that. Okay, so next bit on our agenda for this evening was, uh, so we've looked at that. We're gonna go through now another presentation, which is looking at the resources that are available. So we're going to sort of click in and out and I'm going to show you and hopefully this is going to work because this might, I'm hoping it's not, it could be one, one bit of technology too far <laughs> for the, um, and it's not, and it's already disappeared off of my, so I'm going to get rid of, I've got one, one screen too many open. Do you want to make the changes? No, I, I'll, lovely. Um, yeah, it's still not there. General, general talk has disappeared. <laughs> I'll open it up again. Yep, it's there. So what I want to show you now is, no, oh, it doesn't want to show me. There you go, there it is. There's so many things open. What I want to show you now is, um, uh, this isn't a present, like a general presentation to show people. This is more of a, um content that will link you to places to look, find things on our website so I've put here wherever you see this symbol there'll be information downloadable from our website so you right click the text and the and open the hyperlink so if I click onto here and it says the first is bat facts so PowerPoint presentation batty bunting oh and that's something I was going to say I've got this great thing that you can get from the I think I got one of these from an online uh, purchasing platform, but I'm not going to say where from. I think they've got they're, they're doing enough. They're doing business well enough at the minute, and it's great. It's a ha it's a washing line with uh, like a bungee cord kind of washing line, and it's great for hanging up pictures. So I like hang up lots of pictures and do like batty bunting, and you can see that in that lower picture. If I right click on the bat fact here and go open hyperlink. Hopefully this will work, but sometimes when you're on Zoom, it, do, it doesn't quite click. It's like too much information, oh, but it has worked brilliant. So this goes through to our app facts sheet that's on our website. So there's loads more information there, all about bats, echolocation, food, general, just general bits and bobs, and then specifically about greater horseshoes. So if I go back to that, did that sh show you then the website? Mm, let's have a little look. It's opening it, but it's not showing you the website yet. No. So that, that when I basically, when I clicked on that hyperlink, this is what came up. And all of these, this info is available on our website, on our downloads page. But what I've, um, let me just go back to Zoom. So let's have a little look. All of the info is available on our website. On here, if you go and you go to, can you see our website now? Should be able to, great. It's available on the downloads page. Can you see yes. trails, community, farmers, loads of information there. And you click into different ones. So if I go into other information, then you've got sort of newsletters and things like that. If I go back, and I go into say education resources. There's loads of things, science, um, games, outdoors, bug hunts, bug. So there's loads and loads and loads of things on there. So what I've tried to do is use this PowerPoint presentation to guide you through all of those resources. Fingers crossed, that's how it works anyway. So you've got that, you go back facts. If I right click on website and resources, it comes up to this um, 
uh, download, which is loads loads of different places you can go to to get resources. Really, really good. And then if you click on the presentation, it comes up to this kind of school friendly presentation, um, which at the moment is in PDF format. If you want it in PowerPoint format, please let me know. Um, otherwise, I'm just going to send you the general speaker one and you can get, get rid of the bits that you don't want. If I go on to the next slide here, if it wakes up here. Yeah. Hello, there you go. Displays, these are great. These are great um, posters that you can print off. They're A3 printable. Um, and again, just right click. This one's like, what's about the food chain? This one's like, why is Devon important? There's lots of facts on there. Just really kind of kid friendly. The next one here is a bat game. And if I pull this up like this, you have got all the instructions of what to do in order to play the game. So we're not gonna go through it all there because it should be self-explanatory and all be there. And if you look here, right click on the instructions, it tells you what to do. Right click on resource pack and it's the picture. It's the these ready so that you can print them out as A4. The idea is that you, I, I usually put all the pictures on the floor, I hand out all the words and I say to the kids, see if you can match up the words to the picture. And then as you're going through that game, you then get to talk about their prey when you are talking about the bar now, talk about what, um, what they prey over. So their prey or what predates them. Or you get to talk about, you know, great fortunes, how they hang when you're looking at this picture. You might talk about they really love dung beetles. Or if you go over to this little one, which is a pup, you talk about the fact that their they're young are called pups. So it's just a way of kind of getting um, different info out there. And on here, you'll see in the instructions, like hibernation, what does this word mean? Do I still feed when I hibernate? And I've clicked yes on winter nights. So there's lots of info in there, okay? Loads more info in there. So I'm gonna click on, so this is my touchy feely box that I sort of showed you already. And down here, again, there's just a bit more information that sort of goes with that touchy-feely box, a lot more information. Down here, bug hunts, draw or false game. Draw or false game is a good one to play with kids because it, allowed, it enabled you to sort of round up information at the end. But also, um, if, you for, if there were some specific things that you wanted to say, but you forgot, we well, can make sure they're in your true or false game. And then, mm -hmm. and then you definitely get that kind of information out there. Um, some ideas linking to the food chain. So we've got here, we looked in the other presentation about kind of at hotels and things like that, but also you've got sort of other activities that you look and look at here, making seed bombs, um, linking to habitats, what else, back boxes, lighting. There's lots of other sort of info and ideas there. Linking to habitats, Bat trails, these are great. And we're gonna look a little bit more at bat trails in a minute, so I won't chat too much about that. Um, land management guides for orchards, hedges, livestock. Again, those are all available. So if you right click onto the website, that will go into that. And that's how to maintain an orchard for greater horseshoes or to help with hedges, lots of different things. Bats in lighting, bat friendly gardening, as I said, all links in there onto the links on the website. And then we've got here, Bat Buddy School Award, just for great ideas of what to do for bats. I think you were saying, it says Bailey LA, but I've forgotten, was it Joe, did you say your name was? Joe, it was, yeah, Joe. So that, that, those are gonna give you some great ideas. You don't have to do your Bat Buddy Award or mm -hmm. become a bat friendly community, but that will give you ideas of things that you could do on your mm -hmm. land. I think those are really, really handy. And again mm -hmm. here, join or become a bat friendly community. Um, Joe, whereabouts are you? In Torbay. In Torbay. So you've got, so Berry Head's quite close to you. Yeah, you're, a yeah. bit, you're a bit far from sort of Bovy Bat Group or Chudley yeah, Wild. Yeah, literally over the road from Ockham. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. But we do, we, when we've done the surveys, we've had six or seven different species of bats come over. So that was amazing. Right, right. So I just think, you know, you are going to be your own, sort of community aren't you your own back yeah. community but all of those 
all of those lists just give you ideas really instead of you having to think what should we do it just yeah, gives you just stimulate your ideas really and then we've got a last little slide here and that links to hopefully all the other bits on the website newsletters and great films where you can watch the bats in action and what i'm going to do is i'm going to stop sharing that screen now and go on to the website um so you can look on here and you will see, um, let's have a little look, Bat Project. So you can see the project films that I was talking about earlier. Bats and People, that's the one I was showing you, but the sound didn't come through. Bats and Farming, Bats and Science. And you've also got, um, oh, there you go, a little bit more information about the project or the people that have worked on it. Oh, let's get rid of that. We don't want to look at ourselves. So, and this is like lots of different updates that have happened throughout. So different films. This is a great film. You should watch this. I don't by a film French a film French maker. I mean a French filmmaker, but it's fantastic. Really, really beautiful images in this film. So just some great links, really, says and different things. So just going along, going along, lots of different ideas. But that's the really helpful is all of that kind of info that's in those downloads. And I'm just going to stop for a second and just check what our next bit was. Okay, so I've, I've got that sound. I'm going to try it on you and we'll just see if it is going to work. But the sound didn't work earlier, so can you hear anything other than me? Oh, okay, so I'll just send that to you later. Okay. Oh, it's like it's like a, an alien. <laughs> really, so it's worth definitely worth a listen when you get that sound file. Um, so logistics wise, like who might you go and go and do a back talk to? I mean, and a back talk or imparting that knowledge might not just look like a PowerPoint presentation. Angela's going into a school. She might just be sitting down with the children, with a group of children, showing some pictures and having a bit of a chat. Or you might go into a school and do an assembly and you might have like four or five slides just so that they've got something to look at. Or it might be in front of a group of 10 or 12 people, you know, like a very kind of formal kind of you know formal talk situation there are lots of different ways of kind of doing that and um, who to sort of go to really it's you could go into local schools scout groups scouts brownies those sorts of things if they're doing their wildlife badge the cast scouts and the brownies they'd love someone to come in for a night and to talk about um, acts to kind of get, get them started and getting them involved in that and um, even like local like Book groups and things like that. I think the best and easiest way is to hook into things that are already happening. So if you want to, if you're really keen to do a back talk, get hold of a group that you know already meets. It could be the WI or it could be um, a local histori his historian, like historic group, or I can't think of the word. My words, I think I've talked so much, I've lost the ability, I'm losing the ability to talk because I've talked so much. So it's like, but that's much easier than thinking I'm going to do a talk and booking a hall and putting a, a talk on and then trying to get people to come to you. I mean, it's much easier to hook into a group that's already running, I think, is, is probably a good way to go. Um, but next sort of where, Tess, have you got your hand up? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's yeah, we've, we've sort of done all that using uh, using the groups and getting um, either local naturalists or people from the bat project. But with COVID, I mean, it's almost impossible to do that sort of thing. Has anybody had any really good ideas of how to keep the in interest going through this um, um, episode? I suppose we've had, we, um, we have had more interest in it. You know, we, ha we are still having people coming and getting involved, but they're getting involved in this format, okay. this kind of way, this way, okay. you know, doing sort of Zooming things. We're not organising meetings. Up. Yeah. And we found last month in the BAT project, although restrictions had been lifted for that month, any of our in-person events 
were not that well attended. Even though people booked on, they just weren't well attended. People still weren't feeling, but actually all of our online events were, re people were very keen. So, I mean, lots of groups are still meeting. People are still starting to, you know, I, I, a lot of people were really against it. You know, I don't want to go online, but the fact is if you want to stay connected and informed and still do things, this is the only, this can, might be the only way you can do it. So potentially some of those groups may still be Zooming, yeah. may still be meeting in that way, or... Yeah, I'm not sure that many of ours, that they're fairly elderly. Uh, yeah, and, um, so they're not going to be meeting. Stop. But we uh, are doing our small group who goes out um, back recording and back detecting. Um, that's just a half a dozen of us who are a bit crazy. We like hanging around in yeah. the dark. Okay. Um, that was still going You're just batty. Yeah, you sound like you're, yeah, batty. I like that. Thanks for saying it, Vicky. I didn't, <laughs> hanging around in the dark. Very good. Well, it might be, Tess, perhaps local to you, that there may be other other volunteer groups that are keen to perhaps yeah. do some more things. Because by, by there might be the local, uh, I suppose you're not that close to park. That's more Bovy, Bovy yeah, yeah. isn't it? No, but Bovy are well organised. They've had a... A, a DWT group for a long time. We are less well organised. I'm just, I'm just writing down something. I've not gone off for a little snooze. Mm -hmm. Any ideas for COVID? I now have somebody who uses Facebook, which is quite good. Yeah. Younger people use Facebook. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, just... it's just sort of distant things that people can do. Or, yeah. You know, to stimulate their interest. Yeah. Well, maybe that could be something I I put out. Uh, I, I think it's something worth discussing a little bit more, getting those, uh, getting some ideas together. I've popped it down and maybe um, I'll do it when, when we have those recap sessions, mm -hmm. we can have a little bit of a discussion around that and any anything that comes up I can share with, we can share that. So I'm going to pop that. I know. Can I just make a suggestion? It's... Um... Not fully Greater Horseshoe Bucks, but at one point around our area, they were doing a basketball rock. So you decorated stones and then you laid them out in different places. If people decorated with them and with bats in different places that they've actually seen bats flying around and got the conversation going, oh, come see where I've found this bat stone. Where else yeah. have you seen them? Just yeah. outside the boxes. Yeah, because that's a kind of, I, Sam went off really quickly there because she had family dinner time fun happening still, mm -hmm. I think. But I think also it's like that idea of like geocaching or letterboxing. It's that old, like letterboxing is much older. Geocaching is a bit more recent. But yeah, like a bat, bat, a bat caching, you know, with like stones or something. Just to, And it's just to get people out and about, isn't it? And I think that one of the things, well, the next thing we were going to talk about was where you know, where to hold walks and talks. Walks, if I just share the screen again, if I go onto the download page, if you go onto bat trails in the download page, this isn't really gonna help, I'm afraid, Nikki or Joellen, because mm -hmm. these are all, or or Angela, you either, I'm afraid, because all of these are Devon-based bat trails, but they, I suppose they would give you, if I click on this very head one, and um, they will give you sort of ideas of, of places to go that they know that we know bats can be seen. So this one here gives you sort of a map of where to go, a little map about around the walk. And here I think we start at the artillery store, which is the, um, the sort of bat beacon up there. And as you walk around all of the different sections, discuss different different areas of interest, you know, there was um, where bats may be feeding, where you might see bats flying. These trails are set up for the daytime for when people are walking out and about. But they are because they are of, of interest to bats and where you would see bats at night. So they could help you if you're looking to sort of set up something like a bat walk. Also, um, if I go back on my... Uh, it could be like if you were thinking about where at the moment to hold a talk, um, potentially, you know, via Zoom, 
if it was with a group that was already running or going into Angela's off into a school, something like that. Or like I said, you know, hook into groups that are already happening. I would suggest that you that you work and regarding kit, really ask if you want to use any kit, re, you know, really get that kit provided by the people that you're offering a talk to. If you need, if they want a presentation, it's much easier to use the kit that they've got. They know how it works, all of those sorts of things. Mm-hmm. And but I have got, and I will send you a list of where you can borrow kit from. And most of those are from local AONBs who have all said that they're happy to loan out kits, but stuff is constantly changing at the minute. So it's still worth contacting them if you want to borrow something, but bear in mind due to restrictions, stuffs, you know, the goalposts are being moved all the time, aren't they? In and out and up and down. And so, but by, but by all means do contact them. Vicky and Joe, Joe Ellen, like I said, I'm really sorry. I don't think it's worth you traveling to Devon to borrow a projector. I think that's a bit too far. You know? I love trails. I think that's brilliant. And you know what? If I was more techie, potentially you could like invite, you could send an audio of bat sounds with it, couldn't you? But I'm, I'm not very techie. Mm-hmm. But yeah. um, I was just going to let everybody know as well that I just had a quick look at the Bat Conservation Trust webpage and they're doing a hashtag bat bake for Halloween, in case anyone wants to promote that, get people baking. Excellent. (laughs) And then I also saw that they're doing like a competition, a creative competition, people have to do pictures, but that closes on the 18th, so that's quite close. That's quite close. So um, there's a couple of things out there that are happening at the moment. Yeah, great. And I thought- If if you look at Luby, um bat centre in florida and america they've got lots and lots of ideas for their big bat bonanza which goes on through the whole of october so that's worth looking at great um, great great good ideas yeah great and also with that sort of trail idea i don't know how techie you are tess but you know lots of places you do use um and people are getting more used to using them now are qr codes because of the t- track and trace, people are sort of having to get their head around them. And they're a really mm. useful tool and they're quite easy to create. Um, that potentially, like, like Sam's idea of the stones, and you, they, or it's similar, you could have something similar with um, QR codes and they're sort of popped around different places. In, but like you're saying, it can be, it's about just, getting different generations interested, isn't yeah. it? It's, I don't yeah. think I, 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 I was thinking of a, a a treasure hunt of picking up all the bat flyways that we have and have some way of finding, um, you know, the mark that says, oh, the bats go this way. Um, but I, but the QR codes, if I can find a young person. Yeah, they're, they're yeah. a nice, or they could, they could be in project, couldn't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think somebody's got a light bulb just went on above your head then. Yeah. I like that, excellent, excellent. Okay, so the last thing is just what to do before a walk or a talk. It really um, worth filling out a risk assessment. Really, really good, good thing to do. If you're going to a group anyway, it's likely that they've done one already. Until the end of the project, if you use our risk assessment, a copy of ours and fill it in appropriately, to, you are, are and registered as a volunteer, you are insured under our insurance. Um, but it's just re- it's just good practice. It's just good practice. So you've considered all of those things, um, you know, where to walk or you know where's it dark or not dark what shoes to wear you know it's practical stuff and many people say we've gone health and safety mad but actually I think it is quite useful to think about these things as well um okay so I've just got one because we're not going to go off into the breakout rooms we've probably just got another sort of 10 minutes left can you cope for another 10 minutes or do you need a break Everyone's coping. Everyone's a coper. That's brilliant. Keep, <laughs> keep calm and batty on. Brilliant. So I will send you a copy of my top tips. But I am going to go through them a little bit now. So there's just a really so they're just ten top tips for presenting. I've sort of come up with. I've got a few helpers, a little bit of help off of the internet as well. Sorry, Mike. I think I'm going to sneeze. No. No, it went. I thought it was going to, in a minute, I'll explode on you all. So my apologies in advance. Um, Okay, so number one, um, know your audience. 
so I've put there. So um, keep, so I've said, keep in mind who you're talking to. And I was just sort of saying, I've given presentations to PhD students who know so much more about bats than I do. Um, so I, I, I'm, I, I, I can't tell them anything more than they already know. But the thing I do know is how I've engaged people into being interested in bats. That's the bit that I kind of talked about. You know, I of course had some nice, pic you know, you have some nice pictures, but it's, you know, knowing who you're sort of talking to. And just because they're PhD students doesn't mean they're not going to be interested. I mean, who'd not be interested in listening to me for 20 minutes, do you know? But they are, they were interested in, you know, how do we do this bit? How do we now get the, so it's no kind of no, what do they want to hear or what do they need to hear, that's, that, that, you know, to help them? Um, number two, keep it simple especially if you're going to give a, a kind of a, a general talk. Um, so I was looked at some research and it said that if you give a talk that makes people feel that they're smart early on or that or you or you talk about something that engages people quite soon in the talk, you've got them, you've got you've got their interest. If you whereas if you go too high, you you lose people because they're just like, oh this isn't a, this isn't of interest to me, that this is too, um, this is too wordy, this is too, so it's really important to kind of get that, that level right, and people love it, I love going to a bit of training, and I know what they're talking about, I feel like I feel validated, that I, that, oh, I, I am good at my job, because, you know, <laughs> there's something about that, isn't there, feeling sort of like, like you belong or something. Mm -hmm. um, number three, know the setup, I would just say in advance, Although I've said, test the tech, have a run through, you can test anything and you can run through everything and it can all still go wrong. So just, it's that thing where, you know, test the tech, but at the, it does go wrong. Don't worry about it. And everybody knows sometimes it goes wrong. So just think it's fine, breathe, have a bit of water, you know, it just happens. And people are generally really sympathetic to things like that as well. Um, at number four, emphasize connection over content. So um, it's, it, it's important to connect with your, your audience. You know, look at your audience. It can be really hard, mm -hmm. you know, if you feel a bit nervous or something. But, you know, it's people are, Generally, people are interested in people as well. So, and the next one, number five, is be authentic. So it's really about um, being yourself as you're talking. Um, I gave an example, I think, at the last talk. It's like the last thing you want to do is start your talk sounding like David Attenborough or something. And, <laughs> like, and then you have to carry it on, don't you? You have to carry on. Or people get caught out in things like they put on a silly voice. And suddenly you're like, or, or something, and you you know that you're doing it. So just relax, be yourself. People like, you know, use everyday language, feel comfortable. People will feel more comfortable. Um, and I said number six, diversify your delivery. Use different tools, use research stories. I'm aware that I'm saying that whilst Zooming with you. <laughs> so I, I've tried to use some pictures and... Mm -hmm. show you some stuff and things but it's quite it's I get that it's quite hard at the minute and I haven't done that but I think you know and the next one's like mix it up shake it up use mix use mix media videos handouts props you can use really cool smartphone apps but sometimes we can get over teched and I think at the moment if you're doing something via zoom just stick with the zoom that's probably enough tech to be dealing with um number eight stick to your points so you know you might want to determine what you're going to say and obviously when you've got a powerpoint you it's easier to keep on point powerpoint isn't it because it's all up there whereas if you're having a discussion like with kids or you're in a smaller group that's why something like um that kind of recap game like the, the, the um, true or false game is handy so if you have gone off topic and that is a way of kind of feeding that little bit back in. Um, number nine, don't lecture the whole time. You know, it's, it's and I, again, I'm aware that I've just gone wow, wow, wow for like an hour and 15 minutes. 
I hope it didn't feel like a lecture. Luckily, you, like Andrew's on a sofa, so it's not like, oh my God, I'm, a, I'm on a really hard chair in a cold village hall, listening to her going on and on. So luckily it wasn't that bad. And leave time for questions. I think that you can sort of say to people, you know, by all means, ask questions as you go along, but sometimes that can sort of throw you and take you off. So, you know, you could decide, you know, do you want it to be more of a discussion, ask questions as you go, or just kind of leave time for questions at the end, because people, you know, that often brings up a little bit of info. And don't worry about somebody asking you a question that you don't know the answer to. And just say, I'm, God, great question, because I don't know the answer to that one. In schools, I say to children, and I used to do this a lot when I worked for the Royal Dar Museum, I'd say, ask, I want one of you to ask me something that I don't know the answer to. That's your mission. And they'd think through the whole day, they'd keep coming up with like, oh, a question that they could ask that I wouldn't know. You know, so it's just a chat, I don't know. If it's kids, it's quite nice to challenge them with something like that. But um so I think that's just about it. I think that just leaves time for questions. If anybody's got any questions. <laughs> I'm curious, are y'all able to use live bats in any of your presentations? Some that have been through what we call rehab, your carers. So I am not. Cannot be released. <clears throat> I am not because I am not a bat carer. Okay. However, we at a conference um, a couple of years ago, we had a sort of community engagement conference. A local bat carer did bring along a bat who was being cared for, but we, but they ha but people have to be trained and licensed to be able to do that. Yeah. Oh, we've got a little. So if we take a, I was say if we take a live bat along to an event, it's not the main focus of the event. It's something brought out at the very end of the event. Um, and the idea is to get the information to people and not make a big song and dance. The fact that the live animals there, um, you're trying to keep everything as, as much as possible. And bats that can't go back to the wild, um, they've been in care for at least six months. So we're not concerned about rabies risk. Um, they used to be around sound and they're not dressed in the environment, making them too. Yeah. Um, and then you've got to look about what environment you're actually doing the talk as well. But that's another area to think of. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's well. so it, it's it is possible, but it's well monitored and contained, isn't it? I think yeah. you know when they kind of come well, out. I'm, I'm just, permitted to do that, and uh, okay. but not a lot of people here in the states do that. But you know, you also we're not catching wild bats. To use mine do come yes. from rehabbers and my agreement yes, yeah. with, with rehabbers is i will take any bat that needs a home and give it a home where i make it work or not yeah. um some bats just don't you know adapt to having to deal with screaming children and yeah. uh or like you know i have some um uh, fruit bats of course they're not in the house yeah, I was yeah. going to say, Sam was like, yeah, I'll get you there. <laughs> yeah, you know, but I have others that, you know, they just sleep right through the whole thing. Yeah, and, yeah, um, yeah. you know, but my fruit bats, um, of course, they're not rehab animals. They actually came from the Luby Bat Conservancy down in Gainesville, Florida. And uh, so they were research animals that needed a home, you know, and what they don't like is being stared at all day long. If they're on exhibit, yeah. you know, where they have to sit if we're outside and they can't be out of their cage. You know, so, so yeah, I just, uh, yeah. a lot of places don't allow that. And like you said, some places. I would check in care. before, I would, and I would check in before you go somewhere. Well, that they're sort of having that. Yeah. Tess is nicking off. Tess, just to let you know, I'm going to get everybody to email me, to give me their email, but I've got yours already. That's the only last thing that I'm going to do. And then I'll, I'm going to send everyone a wee transfer to your email and I'll do it tonight. Okay. That's if, great. Because if all you, that is all very useful stuff. So yeah. I hope. Anyway, thanks very much. Okay. And it's by all means, I'm about until the end of December. So if you get it and you need any more info, you just say, uh, what was that thing again? Or where was that? Or you just ask me whatever. I actually need Eleanor, but you know, I'll get around to Okay. <laughs> <laughs> She's busy. She's a busy bunny, definitely. Exactly. Definitely. She is. So yeah. too much data. And okay. Natalie, that's lovely. Thanks, Tess. Thanks so much for coming along. And somebody was asking, how do you help adults and kids if they're really afraid of bats? 
that's why I use the, my touchy feely box is that I'm trying to to get people to understand that they're not they're not scary. They look fluffy little, lovely. That really need our help. That they're scared. That's, I, it's hard, isn't it? If you've got something in your head that you're scared of something, it's it's quite difficult to get over, over that. But I think that's why I. I'm trying to show you them. I've got another great picture here, you know, of them all fluffy, just all fluffied up. But it's, um, I'm, that's why for part of the, most of the project, we've tried not to hook into the Halloween idea of cats because that just continues to feed into um, the the kind of fear factor around things. But we, just, but we do a little bit of stuff, but we try not to go down the spooky kind of bat thing because they, they have got that, They've got that rep, haven't they? You know, for being these. Well, they only come out at night. They're pretty antisocial. I can understand it, but um, yeah. So I hope that helps a little bit, Natalie. Um, Call it bat day. Have a bad, but a good bat day. Call it bat day. Yeah, that's what I wish yeah, people. Bat Happy day. bat day. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so celebrate we, them. So Sam, I, I point you. out the bats are about ready to hibernate at the time for Halloween. So you see, the chance of you actually about. seeing a bat They're flying around. Yeah, yeah. No, exactly. Yeah. Sorry, I was just making a note there. So can any? I've already <laughs> got Angela and Sam's. Have you still got the same email address, Sam? Yes, I can see that. Um, so I wondered if anybody else could put their email if they can send it to me. You don't have to do it to everyone. You can just do it to me. In the um in the chat and then straight after this session i'm going to email you all that inf info via a we transfer file and then do come along either next tuesday 9 till 10 30 might not suit vicky and joelle and i get that and yeah that one's a little early <laughs> that one's a little early isn't it well you could come out with the bats couldn't you <laughs> that's why I put the week after it's mm -hmm. between six and seven thirty. So I did one in the evening as well for any well, for um, for people that might be working. And that's just an opportunity we can get in the we pop possibly we'll go into Zoom rooms. Might just go in if it depends how many people there are. We might just all stay together and then everybody have a little go. But so everyone's got an audience then, you know. Otherwise, just doing a talk to one person sort of. <laughs> um, it's not the same is it it's not the same no. so I think that that's everything I've got I've got Natalie's Joe Joe Ellen's Joe's and I just need your email Vicky in fact I've got your email haven't I you should and I, I did put it in chat you. yeah Look. Yeah, I saw somewhere that there's a big development in Florida and it's going to be a decision this month or something whether they build some big hotel complex. And did you know about that? Uh, no, I didn't. I'll have to find out. Are yeah. they, is it yeah. because of where the bonneted bats are? Yeah, I can't remember now because I was I was going to sign the petition, but I don't live in the States. So um, I actually I could send the email to Lizzie and Lizzie can send it on to you guys in America and you can ask everyone to sign the petition. Yeah. Hopefully. We'll sign it anyway. Hopefully it's we're not too we all care about that. <laughs> I'll figure it out. <laughs> great, it. great. It was it was definitely the the greater bonneted bats, and it's a it's a it's a an area. They're they're so rare, and it's one mm -hmm. of their roosting areas that's going to be devastated by hotels. That's it. Yeah. So that's yeah, I'll send the information you shared. Why is it that's okay, Lizzie? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's bad though, isn't it? And it's a shame, I mean, it's this endless debate. We had a, a bat chat during the bat festival and it was bats and buildings and the challenges and the, the, the opportunities of those things. But, you know, when it's then for a hotel or it's a tricky thing, we're not trying to house people then, are we? It's an even like a lesser need, I think, for how, for, kind of doing that so that's a real shame but um yeah just vicky did i email you the link for tonight the or link for tonight or did you did you get through on by the event right page i think i got through on that page but i do think you emailed it to me as well i emailed it to you as well so i'm just checking because i can't find your email address on the chat so oh, i yeah. just i was just checking that i had it um, before you sort of went off, I wanted to just check. Did you get the email I sent 
Did you get the email I sent after your sister's story time? I sent you some pictures of when I had visited Devon. Yes, yes. I thought I had your email. Yes, yes, yes. yes. I have got it. Yes. So Did I'll, you recognize I'll... those places or people? I'll have another. No, I didn't when I first looked. Yeah. Yeah. But I will have another little look. Yeah, now, take another look. Okay, yeah. yeah. I've had a, oh, I've dropped to something on the floor. Sorry about that. So thank you so much for coming along. Wonderful. And um, well done, Sam, managing bath and dinner time with a whole load of pups in the house as well. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> thank you so much for coming along. And as I said, I'm about for, you know, just get in touch. I'll pop my email. Um, L Mooney is at Devon Wildlife Us. So if you need Wildlife Trust to all get this all on there, I'll send that to you. So do take that. Um, and so if you need any help with the info that I send you, please let me know. And or I might see you next week or the week after. Thanks, ladies. Fab. Great. Thanks. Thanks so much. <laughs> Thanks so much for coming along. Take care all. Bye. Cheers. Thanks, Thanks guys. Mm -hmm. Bye now. Bye. Bye.